it's not recovered. Hey team, Liam from Lazarus Personal Training. Now, this isn't my usual spot. I was sat editing a video and didn't feel like it was being communicated right. Uh, on a personal note, I think this has been quite a quite a tricky video for me to put together because I'm trying to think about what the audience is and who's watching it and just how I want it to communicate. So I've actually filmed a couple of videos where I go on a completely different tangent about being a wrestler. Um, and now I'm actually going back to my original idea. I think the reason why I've taken so long to come to this conclusion is because of how passionate I am about pro wrestling and that I want people to succeed when they come into pro wrestling. But then also, there's only so much you can say about it without just doing it. And the argument that I was having in my head was, if people are gonna get into pro wrestling, they're gonna get into pro wrestling. But I've then talked myself back around and I'm gonna go through a couple of points that I think you need to take into consideration if you want to be a pro wrestler. So this might be a case of you are looking at schools, you're interested in pro wrestling, you're a fan, you've always thought, God, I just want to step into a ring. What do you need as like a baseline level of fitness to make sure that you can start pro wrestling? I also think this video is probably gonna be helpful for people that have just started, so they're in their training phase and they haven't done their first show yet. I think it's probably gonna be a good couple of checkpoints. And also for people that are doing shows, it's a, probably a good reality check of going, am I physically able enough to wrestle? Obviously, we're currently in lockdown, so schools are open anyway. So I'm hoping that we can take the points that I'm probably gonna speak on here and improve on them for when we go back into schools. But then also I think this will hold up for when schools do reopen and people are looking to go into pro wrestling. So yeah, I think there is definitely a reason for doing this. To begin with, I'm gonna ask three questions. So these are almost like prelim questions that we need to ask ourselves before we go into pro wrestling. Number one is asking yourself what your expectations of wrestling are. Like, what do you want to get out of pro wrestling? My reason behind this is that the last thing that I want people to do is walk into a school and think that they are going to be the undertaker instantly, that they are just gonna get on shows. Because it's not what happens. Pro wrestling, especially in England, people work in training for months and years to get on shows. What I do not want people to think when they go to a wrestling school is that they are just gonna get put on shows. And if you are put on shows within a month, two months of you training, unless you are a freak of nature, you're probably on the card too early. And even then, you're probably on the card too early if you are a freak of nature. So be realistic about your expectations going into wrestling. It's hard and you will put in far more than you will get out. Question number two that you need to ask yourself is do you have any current underlying injuries? Wrestling is a physical contact sport you will throw yourself down on the ground. There isn't anything else outside of martial arts where actively someone says to you, throw yourself on the floor. When does that happen? I remember reading an article with, um, I think Johnny Storm had done some, um, done some stuntman work and he was happy to just fling himself into some pallets. I might be butchering this story, I'm pretty sure it's Johnny Storm and I'm pretty sure it's pallets, but he was just happy to throw himself into it and the stuntmen were like, what are you doing? What, no, why would you do that? But we're pro wrestlers and we will just throw ourselves off the balcony because why not all launch yourself down a, a disabled elevator in a student union bar. So with that, you need to look at the fact that if you are holding any current injuries, if you have knee problems, shoulder problems, lower back problems, they will get aggravated through pro wrestling. I'm not saying this to say never do it, you aren't capable of doing it. I'm saying this so you are realistic about the fact that if you are going in with injuries, they will get aggravated, they will hurt more. Can you grit your teeth and bear it? Is it gonna be detrimental to your life later on? We all love wrestling, but is it worth knocking 10, 20 years of our mobile life off of our life. 
And then question number three that you need to ask yourself before you start pro wrestling is do you have time? Do you have the time to commit into pro wrestling? Because like everything else, it takes time to learn it. It isn't just something that you can pop in every month, once a month to do, and then be like, cool, get me on some shows. Just doesn't happen that way for two reasons. One, you aren't gonna pick up what you need to pick up and do them on a consistent basis. I mean, I can't speak for everybody, but when you really love pro wrestling, you just wanna be there every day. I could not wait to go back to training to learn more and to take more bumps and to run the ropes. I miss it. In this moment in time, I miss training. More than being on shows, I miss the physical training aspect of it. I might be a bit weird on that. And then the second aspect of time is, do you have the longevity to do what you want to do? If you want to go to the WWE or you want to go to Japan, being realistic, you have to start pretty young to be able to get into those steps. Not impossible, but if we're being realistic about it, you have to be younger to get your feet, to be in the right circles, to put in the time, to go to shows and get your name onto stuff so then you can get onto bigger shows. It's very hard if you come in older to get to those places. Again, unless you're a genetic freak, shout out to uh, Ridge Holland, who was a genetic freak. And the first time that I met him, I said, you're going to NXT and he's saved in my phone as real name NXT. If you're an average Joe like me, wrestling's gonna be harder and you're gonna have to put in the graft for it. So you have to ask yourself those questions. To get into the fitness tests, there's a couple of things that I think are baseline necessary in order to succeed at pro wrestling. Now this isn't the pinnacle. What I'm not saying here is that you have to be up at this level to be good at wrestling. But what I'm saying is if you aren't above this level here, you shouldn't be training. My first point of call is, can you run for five minutes? Can you genuinely get up off your sofa, do a little bit of stretching, go out for a run for five minutes around the block, come back and not be dead? If you can't do that, your cardiovascular health is not in the correct place for pro wrestling. It's as, it's as simple as that really. So you need to have some cardiovascular health. Point number two is can you do 10 push-ups? Now this is not to say that push-ups are the be all end all. This isn't like the RAF test where they make you do so many push-ups in a minute, but there is some reasoning into it. If you can do 10 push-ups with good form, it means that you have some upper body strength. It means that you have some physical capability. For pro wrestling, we have another person's life in our hands. If we're performing a suplex, we are holding a person above our head with our body. And if we let go, they break their neck. So we need some semblance of upper body strength, which is where I think as a baseline, if you can perform 10 push-ups, good. If you can't perform 10 push-ups, also this is from a man's point of view. Now for females, I would say if you can hit some push-ups from the ground, say two, three, maybe four, excellent, we're in a good place for it. I still think that females need upper body strength. I just think the tests are slightly different. And then test number three that I would do is going lower body and can you hit 20 squats? Can you hit 20 squats with good form at a medium tempo? Not rock it down to the bottom and rock it back up again where we are just bouncing. A nice medium tempo where you go down, where you come up and you are in control. Your motor control is super important for wrestling. So to be able to do 20 squats in a row is gonna prove that you have motor control over your body. It means that you can move your body and you understand where your body is moving. A squat is a complex movement. If we can do a squat, we can do the complex movements or we are at least on the road to doing the complex movements that are required to be a pro wrestler. Number four is can you do a roll? Doesn't have to be a big roll. I'm not looking for a lucha roll down the hill. What I'm looking for is can you do a forward roly poly? You'd be surprised because a lot of people cannot. And this again comes from our modern society where we are locked into desks and we are locked into cars and we just don't move around correctly. I think movement is the key to life. I think it's the key to a happy long life. And if I could, I would have space in the gym with mats out so people could roll around. I genuinely think it's that important. But when it comes to pro wrestling, it's even more important. Not only for the fact that it helps you protect yourself. I remember hearing a story where I believe it was either Bo Dallas or Juice Robinson got hit with a car and they rolled over it and just walked off because they knew how to roll. That might be made up, I don't know. But if you can roll, you can control your body. 
And if you can control your body, you can also probably control someone else's body. So being able to roll is crucial. And I think actually, if you can't roll, that goes back to, can you squat? And if you don't know how you are squatting, you probably don't know how you're rolling. And finally, number five on the tests that I think are super important for pro wrestling, can you get down to the ground and back up again quickly and safely? So a set go is a very common drill in wrestling, and rightfully so. In wrestling, we bump and feed. So we get knocked down and then we come back up again. The set go is a still variation of that. So we're not bumping, we're going down to the ground to come back up again. But that snap and that control is important. And again, this goes into controlling your own body because the amount of times that I see someone where they are all over the place and they don't have a clue where they are is scary. It's scary because then we're asking them to put someone's life in their hands. You need to be able to do a set go. You should also probably be able to do a semblance of a burpee. Being able to get down to the ground and back up again is super vital, especially in a quick essence. If you can't, you really need to look at the fact of do you want to do pro wrestling? They're my baseline things. Three questions, five tests. Now you could look at those and go, they're dead easy. But we need to make sure that we can actually do those things because again, Yes, pro wrestling is really inclusive. Yes, we have all sorts of different... Oh, that's a dog. So yes, pro wrestling... Dog, come on. As much as pro wrestling is inclusive with all sorts of shapes and sizes and big and small, we also need a semblance of physical ability because at the end of the day, pro wrestling is a physical contact sport where you have the life of someone else in your hands. I'm not saying that for hyperbole and to over-egg it. That is literally what happens. People break the neck and people die in pro wrestling. The last thing that I want is for someone to get hurt at training because they don't have the physical capability to train. This isn't meant as a hit piece towards anybody or it's not meant to fire shots at people. This is just genuinely a video that I think people need to see to make sure that they have the physical capability to wrestle. If you've liked this video, give it a like. Share it if you think that physical capability is important in pro wrestling, so other people can see this. And if you really like my content, subscribe to the channel. I am trying to churn these out on a regular basis. In the comments below, let me know how you get on with those tests. Give them a go. Can you do 10 push-ups? Can you do the squats? Can you do the roll? Can you get up and down quickly and safely? Can you run? I've been Liam from Lazarus Personal Training, and I will see you next time. That was better. I'm happy with that one.